Okay, if you're watching this, you should now be on to Small Basic 3. Again, it's not a different programming language, it's just the third part in OneNote. And in this example, we're going to be assigning information to variables. This lesson, this lesson is an introduction to variables. You will cover variable assignment, printing variables to the test window, and reading variables from the text window. Introduction. In this lesson, we will build a Mad Libs game. Mad Libs is a word game where one player asks another for a list of words to substitute for blanks in a story, before reading the often nonsensical story out loud. So that's what we're going to have a go at doing. But before we do that, we need to cover a couple of basic bits. So what is a variable? A variable is something that has a name and a value. You can think of them as boxes into which you put values. To assign a value to a variable, you use the equal sign. So, for example, if I type in area, which is the one it gives you below, equals 27.1, the computer now knows that area means 27.1. So every time I put, drop area in, it can use the uh, number 27.1. So if I create a separate one, um, this time I'll call it name, and I'm going to say that the name is Ada. So it now knows that name is Ada. We can also add more complex variables. So we could say something like area is equal to 6 multiplied by 21, or that name is equal to Ada plus Lovelace in reference to the woman who first, first created algorithms. We can even redefine a variable later on. So in this case, at the start of the program, the computer knows that area is 27.1, but later on in the program, the computer now knows that area is 6 times 21, which isn't the same number. In this case, the name Ada plus Lovelace, obviously if I run that, will create something that says Ada Lovelace. And just to give this as an example, what we can do is we can get the computer to display this. So I'm going to take out this first bit just to make it simple. Or in fact, actually, let's just change this. So let's call this area 2, and let's call this name 2. A key thing with variables is you can't have spaces. If I call this area 2, you'll see the 2 doesn't highlight in the same way, doesn't colour in the same way, and we pick up an error. If I scroll down the page, you'll see that the error it says here is that the statement should go on a new line and the expression re uh, returns a result. Did you mean to assign it to a variable? Basically, it doesn't know how to handle it. You can, if you wanted to use two words and you don't want them to be joined up, you can use things like um, a hyphen or an underscore. Okay, You can also use things like camelback, which is where you use uppercase, lowercase, uppercase again. Okay, as, as long as it's all one word, the computer is generally fairly able to cope with that. Then we can print this using the text window. So we say text window, right, not that version, right line. And then we can say what we want to print. Now, data isn't a variable. And in the example below, it says variable name. That's also not a variable. We've only got four variables here. We've got area, name area 2 or name 2. So if I write in just as the first example area, using that one, which apparently I haven't spelt correctly, but we'll worry about that. Okay, um, and then I press run, you'll see it comes up as 27.1 because I'm printing out that. If I change that to be area 2 and I press run, you should see it comes up as 126 because in this case what it's doing is it's printing what the result is of 6 times 21. If I remove that and write in name, you'll see it takes the variable name and prints that. And equally, if I print name 2, you'll see you get Ada Lovelace because what it's done is it's printed the variable two, which uh, variable name two, which in this case is Ada space plus Lovelace, so it's pushing those two together to make one variable, which is printing out here. Obviously, we can do more than one, so we could say text window uh, right line and have 
uh, area showing under that. So we could have on one line we've got the um, variable Ada Lovelace, and on the other line we've got 27.1, and if we run that, that's what, again what we should see here. So we can build up multiple lines this way. Okay. Interestingly, if I change this and I call these both the same thing, so if I make this name, then what we should see here is it should print Ada Lovelace because that's the nearest one. It's replaced this original Ada. Okay, so we get Ada Lovelace. We still get the 126 because that hasn't changed. Now, if I remove that from here, Control X, and place it in here, this spacing, by the way, doesn't matter. I'm using it to make it a bit sim uh, simpler. If the computer sees a blank line, it will just ignore it and move on. But sometimes for us, it makes it a little bit easier to see. Now, because this is now calling name on line 6, and name was defined on line 4, it should print Ada. So if we press Run, we get Ada and 126. This is something that we probably don't need to know yet, but basically what it means is that you can define a variable and then redefine the variable as you go on and that becomes quite important particularly if you're adding numbers to it what we also want to do here is we want to be able to read inputs so we want to be able to take um, an input that we're asking somebody and add it in as a variable so in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to create something called line equals text window dot read okay and what this does is it will read the next line that's typed in until the enter key is pressed the problem here if I run it is I don't really see anything I can write something like hello and press enter but nothing's going to come out so what I want to do really is I want to ask a question before it so I could say something like text window dot right line and in here we could write a question so I could write where are you today and then it will say text window read so if I run this it will come up with where are you today and then it should ask me to enter some information Try it like that. So where are you today? You see, it's not jumping on now, and I can say where I am. I'm in Morpeth, in the United Kingdom. Okay, and then it doesn't end the program until I press Enter. Now again, that's not very informative or interesting at the moment, but what it's basically done is it's taken what it's read and stored it as a variable called line. I could change that. I could change that to anything I want. In this case, I could call it place. And it will still work. Where are you today? I'm going to say Morpeth just to keep it short. And the program ends. This is also interesting because now we could print that out. So we could now do text window, right line, pressing the tab too early there, which is why that's happening. Right line. And now I could put in I hope you are enjoying it in and then if we put in a plus I think this should work and then place okay this because it's in speech marks is a straight printout but this one should take the contents from place so let's press run where are you today so I'm going to write Morpeth I have presented for it to be submitted I hope you're enjoying it in Morpeth. You'll see I've made a small error there in that what I haven't done is put a space after the in. So if I want to make this slightly better, I could put a space there. Okay, I could run that again. Where are you today? Right. Morpeth. I hope you're enjoying it in Morpeth. Okay, good. So that's very quickly how we can create a variable either by manually entering it or by asking um, the user to enter it. And you can see here, place is being defined by whatever they write in. 
Now, what you need to have a go at now is this Mad Libs game. So basically on Mad Libs, um, what you need to do is you need to create words um, that combine together to make an interesting story. And the easy way to do this is to start with some basic bits of text that are pre-entered and then ask people to fill in the blank so it makes an interesting word of itself. So what you could do, just to make a very simple one here, you could take this right back to here where it says text window right line. You could put your first sentence in. It could be, this is, uh, not like that, this is Mr. Dyson's not very good mad libs game. And then what we could do is we could enter some questions here. So we don't really want to see how the story connects together. So if I have something like um, five inputs, we could put something in as a text window. And we could say right line. You need to think of some interesting information for your story. So they're just going to print out. There's nothing clever with either of those lines. Then we could ask them some questions and store them. So we can get create these as anything. And I'm not going to do this whole thing for you, but I'm just going to give you a couple of examples. So I'm going to say question one. So question one is being defined as a variable here. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to say that question one, in this case, is going to be a text window, maybe. Um, and we're going to read the contents of that. Here we're going to write the message in, so that should be fine. So question one, text window, read. We do need to add a question before that so they know what they're going to write in. So what might be a good idea for this is to say something like text window write line brackets speech marks. Um, so you could just ask them to enter like five bits of information or you could be specific. So you could say choose a name and then they have to write in a name and then you could ask another question so you could say something along the lines of text window uh, right line choose a place and then some additional questions and this one's going to be stored as question two I'm going to say that this is a text window. Again, we're going to read this. Once we've got all the information in, we can now output it. So the end piece would be something like this. It would be something like text window dot uh, right line. And you could start with a very basic story. And you can either make this up or find an existing one. If you search for Mad Libs, you'll find much better examples than the one um, I'm giving here. But it could start with something as simple as this. So we could start with question one plus speech marks. I'm going to put an apostrophe in. She said. Why are you in? Close the speech marks because that's the end of the pre-printed bit. We're going to press plus and we're going to write question two. Now I'm going to close this and end this here, but what I would love to see is you developing this much further. And they could just be very simple questions like choose a place or you could make it much funnier by muddling them up. So they just choose a word or they choose a place they don't want to be or they choose um, names that have got no connection. When you run this, what you should now get are some questions. So this is Mr. Dyson's not very good Mad Libs game. You need to think of some interesting information for your story. Choose a name. So I'm going to choose Brian. 
choose a place, the moon. Okay, Brian, she said, why are you in the moon? So that's a bit strange already, because why are you not on the moon in this case? But you can see how this can start to develop. Again, this is the challenge. So this is the bit you need to think about. And what I want handed in is not just a screenshot of the finished game like this, but also the code, as shown on here, that shows how you do it. Have fun. Hand it in once you've done it, please.